it doesn't matter how experienced a camel is, they will still be um, sensitive to whatever's the weather's happening around them. I think when dealing with with an, any animal, in this case we're talking about camels, I mean there's there's a certain expectation you can have of them, but then there's also they're not just going to be push start. They're not going to be trained and then that means that they're never going to have a problem ever again. Whether you're a camel owner, wannabe camel owner or simply an adoring camel fan, you're in the right place for some fun, useful and interesting camel talk. This is the Camel Connection Podcast. We're your hosts, I'm Tara. And I'm Russell. Join us here for fun learning about camels how to care for, train, and handle them, plus insider stories and interviews. And also some interesting stories of our lifestyle with camels, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the very funny. Make sure you've subscribed now so you don't miss out on an episode. podcasts are an audio take of our video so be sure to check those out on our blog for lots of how-to visuals and of course lots of camels this is your one and only go-to podcast all about camels How's it going, folks? Hi. It's Russell here. And Tara. From Cannibal Connection. Welcome back to a podcast. If this is the first episode you're listening to, welcome. Absolutely. If this is the 48th, I think we're up to, then also welcome. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I was thinking the other day, imagine when we get to 100. Then we'll be able to say we're centurions. And then we'll be able to say we got to 100. Oh, right. 100 <laughs> podcast <laughs> episodes. <laughs> there you go. That's exciting. It that's is. like, I mean, it's, that's information that's not out there, that's now out there. That's true. Yeah. I hope you're getting a lot from this. Folks. Yeah. Really and if hope. you are, don't forget to leave a review wherever you're listening from. Do you know why? Because it really, really helps other people find us. And if you love camels and you believe in, um, you know, people being educated about camels, leaving a review will definitely help other people find us and they can get educated too. It also gives us an indication as to how we're going in our performance in this and also gives us other ideas for other topics in the podcast Oh, as yeah. Well. well, if you do have a topic request, you can actually go to our um, Camel Question section on our website and request a topic or if you want to hear us interview someone in particular in the camel world that interests you, you can request that too. Or if you want us to interview you, you can request that. that. Yeah, because there's so many stories out there. We all come to this at different angles. And, um, you know, some people are just starting out, for example, and some people have been around for a long time and some people have been for, you know, a relatively short time. Yes. With all sorts of different, you know, avenues of getting to where they're at now. So your, your story is important. Absolutely. Everyone um, has their own story and yep. they all matter. They do. They do. Okay. Okay, so we've just done a, sh- a sheet shuffle. A seat, <laughs> a seat shuffle. Because mm. uh, Russell wasn't in front of me and I uh, like to look at him when I'm talking to him. Yeah, what she's really trying to say is that she's just coming out of uh, suffering from conjunctivitis and her eye was hurting. <laughs> I don't think it was conjunctivitis though. Well, anyway. My eye's still hurting. It feels like I've been punched in the eye. Yeah, it wasn't me. Okay, now, <laughs> um, let's uh, move on, okay, to the actual topic. And uh, we didn't know what to call this. No, uh, so we're not topic. calling it anything right now, but no. we are. But, but we... essentially what it's about is camels and the weather and what to expect. And it sounds really cheesy. Yeah. Like we've spoke, we, we, we like tried to brainstorm for like five or ten minutes on, a to- on the title of this. So I'm sure by the time this comes out, it, it'll be a great title. <laughs> well, yeah. No, but but uh, it is the, about the weather and about camels. And But it's funny how significant that is to camels. Yeah, like, yeah. And I think that's the message we're trying to get across here because you've got some good points to Oh, make. listen, I, I, you know, this is something that I'm looking out of the window today and it's blowing a gun. We've been having these massive winds here, whether or not it's part of climate change or not. Um, Tara seems to think, oh no, it's coming up to spring, and this, is, and I know about changes of seasons. 
<laughs> but, but um, you know, it really is quite exceptional wins that we're getting at the moment. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, I'm glad I'm not out there in the yards training a camel. Oh, yeah. The like, they're more than happy to sit down and do nothing Do their day. thing, <laughs> hide behind a tree, whatever it is, or hide behind our tram. We've but, got a tram. Yeah. Do they hide uh, behind there? Oh, they, they can, yeah. But they'd probably go in it if they could. Oh, they would. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, so the weather. And uh, and camels and the weather and what to expect. So let's move on to it with the first um, first part of this. And uh, we're talking about cloudy days. Well, I just want to give people oh. like because like I know this topic really excites you, but from a person who's like, I uh, you know not sure of if this is relevant to them. Let's just say this is relevant to every camel owner, um, especially if you're regularly handling and training them. Mm. Um, if you're considering on going on treks with your camels, this is absolutely paramount information you need to know yeah. because our whole trek, like our whole trek schedule when we trek with our camels revolves around the weather. Uh, look, it does, yeah. And, uh, okay, so we'll get to cloudy soon. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it sure does. And, like, you know, going trekking, you know, in 45 to 48 degrees centigrade heat, um, seriously, it's not fun. No. Uh, uh, being there, uh, you know, there was one day I remember 51.9 in the shade uh, degrees Celsius. And but trust me, it's just not fun at all. And so... Trekking and uh, mucking around with camels in the winter time is actually ideal. Mm. Um, in the winter that brings time, itself, it brings its own issues and problems as well. But, uh, but like, let me just clarify: better on the body. The winter time, you mean in the outback winter time in Australia? Like, because the winter time in the United States, it could be like hail, snow, oh, snow like you know whatever, what I mean. Yeah. So let's let's be broad here because this is a really important topic that I really want you guys to hear because it sounds cheesy. <laughs> We're talking about the weather and mm. camels, but it actually has a lot to do with your camels. And I would say, like any animal, the the camel actually put like. Revolves his whole life around the weather, really, and what yeah, the weather's for sure. doing. Yeah, sure. I mean, bulls go into rut and that sort of stuff, you know, during the winter months here the colder in Colder months, yeah. Um, you know, so, um, you know, come summertime, if you're actually out there trekking and you come across uh, wild bull camels, most of the time they're not going to um, be bothered too much with you because mm. they're actually out of rut. Um, whereas uh, you know, some camels, uh, there are bull camels that uh, don't actually get out of rut over the summer period, so you know, just be aware of that. Mm. Um, but, yeah, the weather certainly does make a difference. And the first one that I was going to start with was, was cloudy versus sunny. Mm. So if you're a new camel owner... Um, or I just you... can't believe we're talking about the weather. We're not experts on weather. No, we're not experts <laughs> about how the weather affects yeah, the animals. Yeah, we do know okay? that, yeah. Um, because it also affects us. Mm. All right, now, cloudy versus sunny. The way how the camels think quite often, I mean, you know, with their eyesight, it's exceptional, mind you. Um, but with a cloudy day, you know, there can be those, you know, floating uh, spooky things that, you know, we can't see, but because of the clouds and that, you know, the camels do see these sorts of things. What and, do you mean by that? Well, it's sort of like a, it's a bit more mysterious for them and they're a, bit, yeah? Yeah, a little bit more on guard, whereas a nice sunny day... Oh, they, they definitely prefer uh, that. You know, they just you know, sit there and chew their cut. Yeah. They're quite happy I've never really that. noticed... I mean, I, now that you say that, I've noticed that about the cloudy versus sunny... Um, yeah, it is a bit more spooky for them. It's a bit more spooky. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, even to us, I mean, you know, when you're really getting in tune with the weather and uh, and your surroundings, so, you know, what's nicer is it to be outside on a sunny day or a cloudy day? Mm. Um, you know, you've got these shapes that are floating past you, above you, um, that um, are regular. I mean, you know, it's normal. Um, but it's much more preferable for it to be sunny. Mm. And if you notice as well, uh, like... But that's a, not always an option On a either. cloudy day, you can actually hoose your camel in, in any direction quite happily with a string of camels in any direction. But mind you, if you've got a sunny day, uh, and I know this from tracking, at the end of the day, try, just try this, give it a go. If you've got a string of camels, all uh, right, and you're, you've been tracking, at the end of the day, try to go ahead and hoosh your string of camels down in the opposite direction to the sun. So they're facing away from the sun. Give it a go. 
Mm. And I guarantee you, you are not going to end up with the nice straight line of push down camels that you. But this is not even have. about trekking because I've seen it with individual camels during our courses that they will like someone will be trying to sit a camel in a certain spot during our course and we'll just say to them, hey, just try and face the sun. And guess what? That's what that's why they were moving and jittery. Like if you find that you're when you're training and handling your camel that they won't sit down on that exact spot that you are asking them to, look around and see where the sun is actually that's facing right. because more than likely they're trying to face the sun. That's right. Exactly. And uh, especially if it's a nice still day and it's rather warm, that is going to be their preferred sitting mm. position um, is facing towards the sun. They are sun worshippers. And I can say from experience with horses, they don't care about that stuff, but um, it, like for camels, it really matters to them. You yeah. know, it really, really matters. And if you can eliminate any stress, fear, anxieties, it's going to make your job a lot easier. Have so, a look at the camels in the paddock as they're just mooching around. Mm. All right, after they're, you know, feeding in the morning, and they're wanting to sit down for the afternoon, in the middle of the day, look where they're sitting, mm. okay? How they're sitting. Well, it depends. Where it, they're it, sitting and what they're mm. looking at, okay? If it's flat, nice flat ground, guarantee you they're looking at the sun, mm. if the sun's out. Yeah. Right. Or they've got bums to winds, which we'll probably Well, into. that's part of the next section of this. Yeah. Okay, and it's talking about the wind. Who's wind? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> just the weather wind, okay? Um, but, yes, yeah, talking about the winds. Now... Generally speaking, the camels will prefer to sit or to have their backsides to the wind. All right. Now, if it's a nice warm wind, they're not going to worry too much about it. Mm. But if it's a cold wind, mm. well, that changes the direction again. Mm. Okay. So backsides to the wind. So if you've got a sunny day, and it's got a cold wind. All right. There's your indication as to how they will choose what putting... the camels will prefer. Yeah. All right. Uh, and our experiences says they will prefer, ugh, they'll prefer, I can't even say the word, they will prefer, like if it's a sunny day but there's a cold wind, they'd prefer to not look at the sun but put their bums to, like, um, away from the wind. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that they'll look at the sun and put their bums to the wind. But, but if the cold wind is coming from the direction of the sun... Uh, and if it's cold enough, they will actually go ahead and ignore the sun and put their bum. That's towards exactly me. what I just said. Is that I didn't they will get that. they anyway. will, they will prefer to put their bums to the wind, regardless of where the sun is. But it all depends on the temperature there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. If it's a warm wind, I I think of no wind. Problem. I think of cold. Uh, but wind. cold wind, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So you know, that's something to think about. Now, if it's a cloudy day, it's going to be the cold wind. Okay, that will, uh, well, any wind really, the, you know, the wind is the factor there and they will nine times out of ten put their backside to the wind. All right, so, yeah, that, that's really where it is, the proximity of the wind direction, which was actually my next point there. So, yeah, with the wind is actually where the sun's coming from. Uh, what sort of wind? Is it cold? Is it warm? All right, things to think about, okay? Think about it from the camel's perspective. That's really what we're trying to get at, yeah. is thinking from the camel's perspective. And therefore, think about yourself. A right, cold, windy day, do you want to be facing the wind or you're back to the wind? Mm. All right, most people, if you have a look at the human behaviour, will put their back to the wind. Well, most animals. Most animals I can't think of well. anyone that wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, mm. absolutely. So that actually touches on temperature, cold versus hot. Mm. Uh, the camels do like the, the warmer weather. Yeah, definitely. But they handle the cold weather just as well. Mm. It's just that you've got to think about, okay, you're walking, uh, the wind is in their face, they don't like it. Mm. No, I did find that when we were in Mongolia and we dealt with the Bactrian camels there and it was like a snowstorm, that they, they were definitely more acclimatised to it. Like they're, yeah. they're not as precious as our domesticated drop. dromedary camels in Australia at least. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I found that they were definitely more tolerated, tolerating, toler, tolerant yeah. of uh, the wind in their face, cold wind and snow. Um but, of course, they would prefer to have their bums, you know, uh, to the wind. That's it. Um, but all in all, like, it really came down to 
the, like this information is transferable to all camels because when the sun was out in Mongolia, but it was still minus five, they were looking at the sun. Absolutely. You know, because yeah. so the camels it's quite love the sun. Mesmerizing, really. Mm. Yeah. Wanted to also get back to the wind, okay, um, and uh, actually walking your camel with the wind. Mm. All right, now. Remem- camel or camels? Remembering that the camel is a timid, quite a timid creature, really. And requires your love and your trust, okay, to overcome certain hurdles that it might have. Um, now, one of the hurdles is that, you know, it operates on that fine line of fear. It's either in total relaxation or it can very easily switch over to this, um, you know, sector of fear. And, of course, coming back from a long, long time, you know, the lions and tigers are always on the lookout for them. When they when they had predators, yeah. Yeah. It's still very it's much still part of them. their... Yep, it's still... Has it evolved the out of them, yeah. Absolutely. So if you're walking your camels and the wind is in your face, okay, now that is going to prevent the sound waves of things coming from behind you, like, you know, cars, motorbikes, push bikes... Especially, um, <laughs> I can think of a few co- coming uh, up from behind you. They can't hear nearly as well mm. with the wind in their face. So you, the operator, has to be more aware for the camel's safety and for your own safety because you don't want to be run over by a camel that all of a sudden gets scared because a push bike comes along. Mm-hmm. You have to be aware of what's behind you as well as in front of you. All right. Um, but when the wind is coming from behind the camel, that's a different matter because, of course, the sound waves are travelling to the camel's ears mm, mm. from whatever object it is that mm. might be moving up on top of them. And I, I just want to make a point here that it doesn't matter how experienced a camel is, they will still be um, sensitive to whatever's the weather's happening around them because as you were speaking then, I was thinking about when I did my charity trek a couple of years ago and I was I was on a um, a walking track that's notorious for bike riders and that exact thing was happening. The wind was coming towards us. Um, our fa- All our faces were in the wind and I was on high alert and then they started, the camel started running because there was a bike and he said, I rang my bell and I'm just like... Didn't hear it. Yeah, didn't hear it. <laughs> didn't hear a thing. So that was, um, yeah, definitely. And they, these camels have had years and years of experience of yep. trekking and being around weird objects and things like that so it's i think when dealing with with any animal in this case we're talking about camels i mean there's there's a certain expectation you can have of them but then there's also they're not just going to be a push start they're not going to be trained and then that means that they're never going to have a problem ever again it's a constant um evolution of of this foundational training unfolding over years and years and years it's just never going to stop yeah, that's true. Mm. Yeah. Because I, I often think that people often think that, you know, oh, well, I bought this camel trained and now it's not trained. It's not trained. Well, what's trained in your opinion? Like That's true. You know, so it's is it because that it's scared of a bike coming up behind or is it because it, it doesn't sit on command on the first command? Um, yeah, it's just, yeah. Just, Absolutely. Mm. And, you know, like, I mean, of course, you know, it all depends on the level of experience and the location as well. I mean, let's take our very experienced trekking camels. I mean, you know, they've gone through festivals with 92,000 people, you know, surrounding them, giving rides of all things. I mean, down the, the tram lines and a major street in Melbourne. But, and, and they did it perfectly, right? Absolutely perfectly. <laughs> they, they walked in a straight line, did everything just perfectly. But put them out in the bush... And we're tracking, and there'd be a plastic bag floating past. <laughs> oh, my God, you know, you'd almost thought the aliens had come down and yeah. were zapping them with their, their light, light rays. Yeah, but I understand uh, that because I'm definitely, in the city, I, I'm more, like, if I'm walking through the city, I, I because I'm on high alert already, like... I'm not as surprised as surprises if surprises come, but if you're in the in the countryside and you're relaxed, and then suddenly something pops out of the bushes, you're on act. You, you, you know, you start to freak out. Yeah, a I bit, just so. want to think maybe it might be more. You know, the camels see something that uh, shouldn't be there. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, in, in many ways. Yeah, but in the city, I mean, you know, so much is happening. Um, you know, the the level of fear could either really take over, or they could just look to you for trust and mm, you know just which do is the what right they thing. Did and in I've that noticed case. that with the camels, you know, in high stress situations, as so long as you're in the middle of it all, 
they're going to behave mm. um, as long as they're you know trained to that level. Well, so long as you've built up that um, trust, that, that connection, and um, that relationship with the animal. That too. Yeah, exactly. So a little bit more on the weather. The snow, look, I'm not sure on that, to be honest. I really don't know how snow affects dromedary camels. Um, I've only um, ever once, oh, a couple of times actually, where I had to wait until 11 o'clock before the ice could freeze off their hump. Um, before loading them. Mm. Um, but that wasn't snow. That well, wasn't The snow. only time we've had experience with camels in the snow has been with the, with the domes- batrons. domestic batron camels in, yeah. in Mongolia, which, you know, they are very much more acclimatised than, I mean, a dromedary would just, you know, melt under the pressure. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, maybe. Yeah, so, but, I mean, there's many of you guys out there that are our clients um, or that have just have been listening to our podcast here that you have dromedary camel. camel and, and it snows, the snow, yeah. and some pref- some prefer to be out in the snow rather than undercover. So, tell, actually, tell us what it's like. Uh, right, drop down some uh, some remarks if you like, some comments. If you do have camels and it has been snowing, and you've tried to train them or try to do things with them, see you know what sort of behavioural differences, if any, um, that there are from the camel. Hmm. Um, I'd be most interested to find that out. I think it'd be similar to the wind, cold. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's cold. Yeah, but I mean, it might be you know like snow sitting on the ground and there's no wind. So there might be snow sitting on the ground. It's windy. Uh, uh, it's windy. Uh, snow sitting on the ground and it's snowing. Um, and it might be a wind attached to it. You know, cloudy day. Tell us about the snow and the and the drums. Um, and the back trends, you know, let us know because uh, this can only help, you know, someone down the road mm. um, to help understand their camel in those sort of climatic conditions. There you go. That's what I think. Uh, well, I'd love, love you to you know, um, tell us about it. Yeah, jot it down. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I think what you're trying to say is make a comment on our Make blog. a comment, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's something that I don't know about mm. and I'd be most interested to find out from our listeners what mm. they've experienced yeah. and well, their I mean, observations. From our from, – because we, we had a conversation recently on our um, Camel Connection private membership page and um, it was about this camels in the snow or camel weather and stuff like that and some say they they have shelter they f- they refuse to go in it some say they their dromedaries use the shelter dromedary and bactrian camels um yeah so i think it just varies across the camels too yeah. like yeah and uh, i'll be i'll be most interested to see what it's all about hey listen there's one here that's fog camels in the fog yeah uh, um, been there, um, definitely, and it's really interesting. They're really quite calm, really quite calm. Right. Mm. Do you yeah. reckon they can see through it? Well, one old technique that I've never tried, um, I've never tried, but I've only heard about, and it's a technique that the that uh, some of the Afghan cameleers used to use, as well as the Aboriginal um, tribes, uh, the Aboriginal cameleers back in the past, uh, in training a camel, they'd have a wild camel or a feral camel, I should say, and they would tie it to a tree, and then light a smoky fire, um, where the smoke is blowing in towards the camel, um, so the camel's getting enveloped by the the smoke from this fire, and it calmed the camel down, and they were able to quite easily train it in a very short period of time. I wonder if they were using particular leaves and shrubs for Well, this I don't know. Mm. I I wouldn't have a clue. But whether or not it's an enveloping of, you know, some sort of... A blanket, uh, so to speak. A blanket, if you like, and fog um, could be the same. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Another one, if you do know the answer to that, you know, write a a comment. The only way we're going to know the answer is by, like, AI. (laughs) AI. Well, what do you What do you think about the fog, folks? <laughs> well, I look forward to the AI with camels. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. To, to really find out what they're thinking at any one time. Wow, yeah. that's powerful. Yeah. Then yeah. we can ask them about the weather. <laughs> we'll ask them about the weather. Yeah, yeah. Nice day today. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> Except if it's AI, don't they translate it into English? They would, and yeah. that would mean, yeah, beautiful day. I'm taking the missus for a picnic. I've never heard our camels <laughs> reply to us like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> all right, well, that's all I've got. Have you got anything more to add on with um, it? No, I just think it's an important thing to consider um, when mm. you when you are training, when you are handling, when you walk, you know, choosing the day you want to walk your camel, um, especially young camels that don't have a lot of experience, you know, choose your days wisely with the training. You know, don't, don't – if it's going to be cold and windy and all that sort of stuff – you know what, they're just not going to perform as well if it's, you know, a nice day that, you know, is not cold wind and all that sort of stuff. There's, right. I mean, there's not a lot of perfect days. We understand that. But yeah. it's just making it, it's setting yourself and your camel up for success. Oh, I was about to say those exact words. Would you like to say it? Yeah, well, to set yourself up for success, <laughs> okay, you and your camel. Yeah. I mean, look, give them every possible opportunity, you know, to have that success because then they're getting the understanding as to what it is that, that you're after mm. or wanting from them and uh, and that they love the praise, mm. of course, mm. um, and they love that positive reinforcement. But if they've got other things to consider, uh, such as, you know, a biting cold wind in their face, mm. um, then perhaps what you're trying to achieve is going to be minimal. Yeah, and I mean, in in that being said, that we've done some pretty crazy stuff with training. Like we, we've oh, trained yeah. in snow blizzards and and rain, very heavy rain. Um, Did I ever tell you about the time when a gust of wind came along and absolutely constantined up the uh, yeah. the, the training yards? Me and this feral camel. Uh, constantined <laughs> into you know just a, a ball of mess with yeah. the, the metal and, and me <laughs> with this camel right next to me and thinking oh, I'm going to get the life kicked out of me. But you didn't. But I didn't. No, yes, we were both in it together. We sort of looked at each other. <laughs> so it, it really does go to show, doesn't it, that um. You know, okay, the weather may not be perfect all the time, but, you know, you do your best to set yourself up. And as they get older, they will become more mature about the weather and they'll be more compliant if you're asking yeah. them to do something. So don't don't be um, afraid of a little bit of, you know, unpleasantness in the weather because that's all part of it. I mean, yeah. camels live outside. Well, look, I mean, you know, I would say, you know, just do what you would what are you going to do? If it becomes unbearable for yourself or yeah. you know, the camel, well, don't do it, obviously. Yeah. Don't um, do what we do and keep going. <laughs> no. But, uh, you know, I mean, just think about what your end result is. And, you know, if you are doing something like what I love doing, my tracking, um, camel tracking, and you are going to be in pretty All sorts rough of stuff. weather at times mm. and, uh, you know, pretty disgusting stuff that most of the society would not even contemplate going outside for. Mm -hmm. Um and that's where you are. You've mm. got no choice, you and the camel. And you have to build up that trust in the camel, you know. But, you, you know, if things do happen, then at least you have an understanding. And why that's happening, you that's know. That's right. If they're refusing to sit down, well, is it because there's a cold wind in their face? Absolutely. Or, yeah. Yeah. What's the most best thing, the best practice, the best handling that you can do to make that camel comfortable in mm. whatever conditions you're in? Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah, best possible scenario in the worst possible situation. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It definitely tweaking and it takes time to learn how the camel thinks and it takes time for you to learn what your camel's like too. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So we've touched a lot here um, in this topic. Um, when when I suggested this topic to Tara, she goes, oh, that's not much because she hates talking about the weather. Oh, uh, I really struggle with small talk. So when I hear people like, let's talk about the weather and camels, I'm like, oh, it's going to yeah, be painful. But it's really really important topic to be aware of and to, you know. Have I know how much it affects them, you know. Especially when, when you trek with them, you realise how much their whole day is focused totally. around the weather. Absolutely. Mm. So, yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And if you have any feedback for us or you want to leave a comment, make sure you do that wherever you're listening. Um, you can head over to our camelconnection.com website and leave a comment over there on the blog as well. Um, also, if you have... A question, a camel question. We have a new segment that we've just um, we're putting out every Monday, or that'd be Sunday for you guys in the United States and and uh, the UK and everywhere else over there. Uh, the other half of the world. <laughs> I don't know how times zones work, but it's kind of like that. If you have a camel question, um, make sure you pop over to our website, camelconnection.com, and ask your camel question. You can submit it, and we will cover it on the podcast. Um, and often there's a lot, there's people that have the same question, so 
that we, we will just cover that all on one basis yeah. through our Q&A. Excellent. Great. Terrific. Thanks awesome. for tuning in, guys. All right. Happy camel earring. Bye-bye. Bye. Virtual Camel School is coming up. Don't miss your chance to learn our Camel Connection Trust-Based Camel Training Method from the comfort of wherever you are in the world. You'll be joining us and other camel-loving people in this dynamic foundational camel training course designed for camel owners and those that want to own camels in the future. No matter if you've been in the camel game for a while or you're only just starting out, you're going to love our virtual camel school with pre-recorded training videos for you to watch and live weekly training videos with us to cement your learning and have your questions answered. We guarantee you'll learn something new. So head over to cameleeracademy.com now to learn how you can join.